Okay, welcome to AntennaTheory.com. Uh, so the purpose of this uh, little web video or whatever is to give an overview of the site and then uh, give a brief intuitive discussion about what makes an antenna. So this site was developed uh, to provide free, accurate knowledge about antennas in an intuitive and informal manner. So one of the cool things about antennas is that the math behind them is so amazingly complicated that most of the concepts can be understood with just an algebra level mathematical background. So, for instance, you know, it's a fact the best antenna engineers are not PhDs in applied math, but rather people who think about things and who obtain an intuitive feel for what is going on. So, back to the site. Um, so from the homepage here, uh, I start off with like an introduction. Uh, type thing that goes through and gives uh, some background on antennas, uh, history, there's a crossword puzzle and some jokes, just uh, something a little goofy before uh, jumping into the real material. So the first real discussion on antennas begins uh, in the fundamentals or basic section. And so here you can walk through the fundamentals of antenna theory uh, kind of like a textbook. Um, so you start with frequency, for instance, work your way through, understand the very basics of antennas. Like, for instance, look at radiation pattern, uh, go through, read all this. And it's kind of organized like a textbook, or once you understand this section, you can go to the next topic, field regions, and go through and read through it like that. Um, so you go through... Um, go through this section, get to why do antennas radiate. Once you understand the fundamentals on antennas and have a little bit of an intuitive idea, then you can go back and begin to understand the basic types of antennas. And there's several of the fundamental varieties or whatever you want to call them uh, here. Um, from there, uh, more advanced sections on Antenna arrays, antenna measurements uh, is a good one. Um, definitions, a whole load of things. So if you're an experienced engineer and you, you know, have a good idea of antenna theory, maybe some of these uh, topics will help. You know, refresh your memory, or maybe dive. You can dive in and learn something that you hadn't learned uh, prior to this. If you have questions, there's a forum here. You can go and post. You know, if you'd like to see a section added or something didn't make sense in one of the sections, then just jump in there and ask a question. Or if you have a legitimate antenna question that you'd like to hit on, then we we'll talk about that. Um, so that's the site uh, in a nutshell. From here, um, I'm going to give a brief intuitive level uh, idea about antennas. So... Let's start by looking at Maxwell's equations. So here, Maxwell's equations are what govern all of electromagnetics, antennas, radiation, whatever. And so you look at this, it might be seem a little complicated or formidable, but the equations themselves are actually actually so complicated that you don't even really need to understand exactly what the mathematical operators are. In fact, if you have a PhD in math, you know, you're, it's not even going to help you here because the equations are so complicated they can only be solved for like the very simplest trivial cases. So anything real world, a uh, PhD in applied math or whatever isn't going to help at all. So there's four equations here, um, four equations that govern the world as far as antennas is concerned. Uh, the last two, Gauss's law and the non-existence of magnetic monopoles, are, are useful for solving certain problems, but really, in tenet theory, we're going to concentrate on these two. So here, this symbol, del cross E, uh, is the curl operator. So what this is saying is a spatially varying E field is going to give rise to a time varying H field. Similarly, an H field that varies in uh, spatial position gives rise to a time varying E field. So this is actually what governs all of radiation and propagation. 
is a spatially varying E gives rise to a time varying H, and then plane waves have to have uh, both a time varying and a spatially varying component. So this time varying field is actually also spatially varying, and that gives rise to a time varying E, which again goes back and forth. And it's this looping around that is actually what causes radiation. It's the interaction of these two equations, the E field interacting, wrapping around the H field, that is responsible for all of radiation. Okay, and then look at this equation. So here we have what gives rise to a time varying magnetic field. So what we have here is current density and then the time derivative of the E field. And so what these are kind of source terms. Current flowing is actually you know, just the movement of charge. Charges separated from each other give rise to a voltage. So this term here is a voltage source term. Uh, if you can get a voltage to add up in phase, you will produce radiation. Similarly, if you can get current uh, flowing, you will also produce radiation. So remember that. And here is antenna theory. There's two fundamental things you need. One, it's a structure that supports radiation. And two, you need a way to deliver power to the antenna, which is concerned with impedance matching or just finding a way to get power there. So in terms of a structure that supports radiation, you know, if you plug a lamp into the wall, current is flowing on that wire. But because current flows in a loop, it travels to the lamp and back. And ultimately, because the current uh, travels in the opposite direction, right next to the current traveling in the forward direction, you don't have radiation because the current uh, cancels out. So number one thing you need in antenna theory is determining a structure that supports radiation. The second thing is involved uh, getting power to the antenna. So, for instance, if you have a really short wire, you could have current adding in phase on that wire, but if it's not, it'll turn out if it's not a significant fraction of a wavelength, where the magic number is typically a quarter of a wavelength or half a wavelength, you're not going to be able to get it to radiate. So, antenna theory is a discussion of how do we come up with structures that give rise to radiation, i.e. how do we get these source terms in there, and more importantly, we want the source terms in there and we don't want them to cancel out, and we also need to get power to that structure. That is the fundamental, uh, the crux of the problem in terms of antenna theory. So to understand that, that is the purpose of this website. So I hope it is beneficial to you. Peace.